administration example is advertising and sales. This is the X called the independent variable. This is called the dependent variable. And by the way, this is a chapter 13, linear regression. This is for the purpose of the, the video. And today we're going to be doing um, the SYX. We'll get, we'll get into that in a few minutes. But right now we're going back a couple of steps. So you have, and the example that I think is one and two. I know there was four and six. What were the pairs of numbers that I used last time? I just got one and two, three and four, four and six, and two and five. Okay, those are the data. And the first thing we did was to graph the data. The X was here, the, or the advertising was here, which the, uh, the basic idea is that as advertising has an impact on sales. In fact, a linear impact, so you double the advertising, you're doubling the sales, it's linear proportional. And if you make a little graph here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is zero, of course. One of the x to the first dot is here. The second dot is three and four. Four and six is up here someplace, and two and five is over here. And we said last time that a good line that seems to fit the data would be something like this. And since the, the, the equation of a straight line y equals mx plus b is now going to be called in this chapter for the reasons I explained last time, y hat equals b0 plus b1 times x. So we're bringing the b over here. The intercept is over there. And we guessed last time that the the slope is around one and a half, and, this, and that the, I'm sorry, the intercept is around one and a half, and that the slope, given that this is a 45 degree line, this is slightly steeper, and a 45 degree line, for those who may have been absent for a couple of lectures, is a slope of one. This is slightly steeper, so we said 1.1. In fact, we proved it that the y hat in this case is equal to 1.5 plus 1.1x. How do we prove it? Because there's a formula that calculates the B1. Is it on the, well, we have it over here. Okay, we have it over here on the left side of the board that you can't see on the video, but we had that on the previous video, there's the, um, this formula for the slope. And the way you implement this, that formula is by creating three new columns, the XY column, the X squared column, and then the Y squared column, which in our case was X times Y, one times two is two, and 12, and 24, and 10, and one times one is one, and three times three is nine, and 16, and two times two is four, and the y squared, which we don't need, we'll need it today, but we don't need it until now, two times two is four, 16, 36, and 25. But the formula really requires the sums of these columns, the sums of the x, the sums of the y, the sum of the xy, the sum of the x squared, and the sum of the y squared, and of course, I should point out to you that an important point that the sample size is four here. One, two, three, four. We have four pairs of numbers. Even though there are eight numbers, there are four pairs of numbers, four dots, four observations. And this came out to 10, 17, this 30? No, this was 48. This was 30? Okay, and this was 81? Was this 81 last time? Still is that. Okay. And if you plug those numbers into that formula, for the B1, you're going to get a slope of exactly 1.1. And if you plug in this formula for the B0, you're going to get 1.5, confirming the basic. And then we learned t the next thing we learned about, which is once you have this formula, how do you get the straight line? We just did the first straight line by hand, freehand. But I don't want you to freehand it on the test. I want you to actually graph it. And the way you graph a straight line is by picking any x, let's say x equals 0. And if x is 0, you're going to get 0 to plus 1.5, so it comes out the first dot is over here. Then you pick another x, let's say x equals 1, and you get 1.1 times 1 is 1.1, plus 1.5 is 2.6. So the next dot is at 2.6, and then you connect them, and you get your straight line. That's how you briefly uh, reminding you what I told you last time. Now comes the thing I mentioned a few minutes ago before the video was turned on. But the next thing we want to learn about is how close the dots are to the straight line. And this is a bad example, so let me, well, it's not a clear example. One of the x, two, and the, so here's, so here's, let's get rid of these dots. Okay, so we have a dot here, a dot here. These are the original four dots. The four dots that represented the four y values, and this is the straight line. So how close, so here, how far apart is this? How far apart is that? How far, and if you look at it honestly, or realistically, 
and I think Kelvin said this last time, how far are the dots from the straight line? And they look like they're on the average. This is a little bit less than one, that's a little bit more than one, a little bit less than one, that's about one. So it looks like the average deviation between the straight line and the dot is about one. Well, the way you can measure it, and it's called SYX, it's called like kind of a standard deviation, but it's not a standard deviation, it's called the standard error of the estimate, the SEE, the standard error of the estimate. I'm not going to write it down, I'll say it. And the formula for it, there are two formulas. First of all, you take each y value, subtract it from the predicted y value, and you see how far apart they are. That's called the error or the residual. And you square it because you get rid of the minus sign. And you add them all up because we have one, two, three, four. You want to add them all together. And then you want to take kind of an average, but it's not n, which you might think about. You might think it might be an n. But for reasons I explained yesterday, it's n minus 2 because I'll repeat that reason, because when you have one dot, this whole chapter makes no sense. Even two dots, the chapter makes no sense, because you have a perfectly straight line. But it's only when you have your third and fourth and fifth dot can you start talking about deviations from the perfect straight line. So it's n minus 2. And then we take a square root to, get, to, get, to, to cancel out that squaring operation. And the answer that we, Kelvin said, and I think the hope of the rest of the class agrees with, it's about 1. The answer should come out to about 1 in this particular case. If it comes out to 43,000, Something's wrong someplace in terms of either our theory is wrong or our understanding is wrong. It got to come out to, a, if we're really measuring how close the dots are to the straight line, and by the way, it measures a couple of other things that we'll get into, more theoretical, but practically speaking, it measures how close the dots are to the straight line. You disagree with yourself? No, oh. when you subtract the, the y, uh, uh, what do you Okay, I, I told, you, told you this at the end of the last class, and I can tell you, go back to the video and watch it, but we'll do it again. Okay, so the question that, again, I don't think the questions are, are heard on the video. Let's just to, to explain this in more detail. Okay, so look at what is the, let's try, let's, let's do this calculation. I, I asked, this is what I asked you to do for homework, which again, nobody said they did, but okay. So the bottom part of it is n minus 2, it's 4 minus 2. What about the for calculation? y minus y hat. Well, what's the first y? The first y is 2. What's the first y hat? Well, the first y hat is the y that's predicted if x equals 1. So if x equals 1, what is the y hat going to be, Kelvin? 1.1 times 1 plus 1.5 is 2.6. So the first y hat is 2.6. So when you subtract it, you get minus 0.6. You square it, you get positive 0.36. So this first calculation will contribute 0.36 to the total. Then you do the same thing for the next y. The next y was a 4. Can somebody quickly tell me, if you plug in x equals 3 into this equation, what are you going to predict it to be? How much is it? I'll take your word for it. Okay, 4.8. If anybody disagrees with Tingru, tell me. And then the next thing is going to turn out to be, the next y value is 6. And what's the y hat when, if you plug in 4 into the equation, 4 times 1.1 is 4.4 plus 1.5 is 5.4, 5.9. So the next calculation is 5.9. And the last calculation is 2, I'm sorry, 5 minus, and if you're plugging now 2 into the equation, 2 times 2.2, 3.2, 3.7. So this comes out, and if, again, if I'm making a mistake, somebody should correct me. So if you, do this, if you plug this whole thing into a calculator, what do you get? I hope you're going to get something close to 1. And I believe it comes out to, if I recall from last year, because I used the same numbers last year, 1.16 after you take the, anybody getting 1.16? Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that down and if anybody disagrees, please let me know so I can tell the rest of the class I made a mistake. Okay, now the question is how can you tell, if I gave you 25 pairs of numbers, how long will it take to do this kind of thing? It might take you 25 minutes or 15 minutes. But this, to hopefully there's a shortcut and there is a shortcut for the SYX. And by taking, Using some algebra, you get y times y, you get y minus y bar is, you know, if you just basically go through the FOIL method, y times y, y bar times y bar, I mean y hat times y hat, you get the cross products and you do some simplification and then get the summation. Well, I'm not going to show you all the algebra, but after all is said and done, the formula is the following. You can't simplify the square root and you can't simplify the n minus 2 on the bottom, but the top, the top part of the equation has a nice shortcut. The shortcut is... And it's not surprising because you do y times y, it gives you y squared. Summation of the y squared, which in eventually we're going to plug in this column, which is an 81, minus b0 times summation y minus b1 times summation xy. 
Now, I could be wrong about this, and the only way we're going to know if we're right if it comes out to 1.16. If it turns out I'm wrong, I'll go back to my notes and check to see where I messed it up, because I may have mixed up two things there. So first of all, is anybody getting 1.16? Great. So now we know that, and of course, that's consistent with our intuition 